So much of marketing focuses on how to go out and get people and bring them into your world. But what if you had a brand that was magnetic, that was attractive, so attractive in, in such a powerful way that you didn't have to go out and get people. People were just drawn to you and they found you and wanted to be associated with you and wanted to dive deeper into what you were doing and actually wanted to pay you for stuff. Wouldn't that be easier? Wouldn't that be more fun? Well, it's totally possible and the best brands understand this. And so in today's episode, what I wanna do is share with you how to become a magnetic brand. There's three things I wanna share with you today that you need to weave in and mix into your ethos as a brand online that'll make it so much easier for you to not only find customers because they'll find you first, but convert sales, build business, make money, and ultimately get people results that they can't stop telling their friends and family about, which will only promote the business more. Doesn't that sound good? Let's talk about that today. Welcome to episode 129 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more to the things and people you care about. I'm your host, Graham Cochran, the guy who named a show after him. I'm pumped to hang out with you today. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm grateful for you. If you're listening on your favorite podcasting app or platform, grateful for you as well. I was checking out some of the Apple podcast reviews you guys have been leaving on the show over there. It's super generous of you, super amazing. So thank you so much for that. It really does help a lot. But if anything, it just helps me know that you're listening and that it matters to you. So I want to continue to serve you in huge ways. And I'm going to try to help you with your brand's attractiveness today. I want you to be able to become a magnetic brand or press into that more so that you literally draw people into your orbit and they want to know everything that's going on with your brand and dive in and become super fans. To that end, I'm also doing something really cool I've been telling you about, especially if you're on my email list or if you caught last week's episode, but this Thursday, October 14th, I am hosting a live one-time four plus hour free training called the Audience Attraction Formula. This is insane. I did something like this, totally different topic a year ago where I just jumped on with you for free, come one, come all, and just taught you a course basically live in front of you, no cost to come, just come please. I'm gonna be breaking down some amazing material, some stuff that I've covered maybe in other places before, but a lot of new material that I'm really excited about you. And how is this, training the audience attraction formula gonna help you? Well, it's gonna help you do a few things. One, it's gonna help you uncover your uniqueness as a content creator and then become a magnetic personality. We'll touch on that a little bit in today's episode, but so important to become your unique version of yourself as a content creator. It'll help you do that. It's gonna help you effortlessly increase your conversion rates by tapping into the psychology of your audience. We're gonna do a deep dive into the way the brain works and the way people work and how that's not manipulation. We're just gonna understand, here's where people are. Let's meet them where they are. And the best content creators can do this. It's gonna create higher conversion, whether it's just people engaging with your free content or buying your paid stuff. Stuff. And we're going to dive deep into how to craft headlines. Like we're going to get nitty gritty into how to craft attractive headlines, headlines that get clicks, drive sales, create super fans, all of that. It's going to be not only conceptual and a little bit of science and psychology, but then super practical as I give you examples of how to create more effective headlines, emails, all of that stuff that makes your brand attractive. The audience attraction formula, it is going to be jam-packed. I want you to come. It's free, even if you can only make it for an hour of the four hours of training, and there's going to be live Q&A and all that. Even if you can only make it for an hour, it will be worth your time, I promise. I'm not doing this again. There's no replay. You have to register to come. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash formula. I'm linking to it if you're watching on YouTube, but go to grahamcochran.com slash formula, reserve your spot. It's happening this October 14th in a couple of days, so don't miss it. Uh, I, I'm doing this just one time only. I'm carving out on my off day. I don't even work on Thursdays. I'm carving out about four plus hours to hang out with you, teach you some amazing stuff I've been cooking up, give it to you for free. 
Uh, I don't want there to be a single barrier for you to come. So just come take it for free and apply it. Uh, and then hang out with me and ask questions live. We'll be able to hang out with you the whole time. We'll break up all the modules and do Q&A in between each module. All right, grahamcochran.com slash formula. Last warning, please come. If you're on my email list, you've been hearing about it. And if you're not on my email list and you're just catching this on YouTube or the podcast, then why are you not on my email list? What are you doing with your life? Come please, grahamcochran.com slash formula. It's going to be amazing. Okay, let's dive into the content today. Um, I think it's, we, we talked about marketing last week. And again, people think about so many of these things wrong. Like, what are the tactics I have to do to convince people to buy from me or hear about me? Do I have to run ads? Do I have to do this, this, this? There are more powerful things underneath the tactics that I want you to understand. Every great brand that's magnetic, that just draws people in, understands these three things. And they're maybe doing them in different ways. Maybe there's different applications of these three things, but they have these three things woven deep, massaged deep into the, the DNA of the company, whether it's a massive company like Apple or Tesla, or it's a small company like Graham Cochran, okay? It's, it's the same. It is the same three things. And I'm gonna give them to you straight and give you the contrast to what most people do instead of these three things. I think you will self-populate ideas of what to do in relation to these three things. And you might be doing one or two of them, but you might be missing one or two of them as well. So as we go through them, ask yourself, am I implementing this into my business? Or am I doing the opposite and I don't even realize it, which is going to repel people and actually make it harder for you to find people to sell to. If you do these three things, it makes it easier because they come to you. You don't have to go out and find them. They come to you and they stay, make sense? All right, how to become a magnetic brand. First element you have to have in your brand is have an other's focus. Your brand has to be so saturated with the idea that it is not about you, the creator. It is about your students, your audience, the people engaging with your content. What does this look like, Graham? Well, it looks like everything, all your communication, your sales copy, the type of videos you make, the way you talk to people in your content, the type of podcast material you have, the way your about page is written on your website. Most of us are so darn insecure that we try to beef ourselves up to look impressive to the outside. And we think if we look impressive, if we have a ton of social proof and credibility markers, then people will respect us. And if they respect us, they'll know that we're trustworthy. And if we're trustworthy, then they will engage with us and buy from us. Do you notice how much of all of that is built around you? If I'm good enough, if I'm credible enough, if I have degrees, if I have cool credibility markers, then people respect me, then they'll trust me, then they'll buy from me. It's me, 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 me. You're becoming a me monster, right? Brian Regan, you're becoming the darn me monster. It's a narcissistic, but I'll be a very natural response. Fear, insecurity leads to you trying to make myself look better online. And if I look better online, people will buy from me. In reality, it's repelling people because what makes people want to engage with you and buy from you is if you have the entire focus flipped from you to them. If your about page on your website is all about you, you have missed the point of an about page. Did you know that the about page should not be about you? It should be about the person reading the about page. That's who it's supposed to be about. Why should we create a website that's all about us and assume that people who land on it are gonna to wanna to engage with us. People don't care about us. Who do they care about? Themselves, just like you and I care about ourselves ultimately at the end of the day. We're selfish, we're narcissistic, it's human nature. We try to push against it. I'm trying to help you push against it. But here's how people actually work. They show up on your website, they find your YouTube channel, they download your podcast, they're checking it out for the first time. They don't care about you. They care about whether you can help them. That's what they're looking for. So if your language and if your content and if your entire ethos as a brand is speaking to them about them, about their problems, their hopes, their dreams, oh, that's attractive. Why is that attractive? Because everybody loves it when the spotlight's on them 
maybe not in terms of like being in front of a ton of people, but even if it's one person in a conversation, you, wouldn't you rather them talk about you and help you, right? We want help with our problems. We want our dreams to come true. I don't wanna hear about you. I wanna hear about myself. I want you to listen to my story. I want you to tell me what to do. I want you to give me advice. That's what your audience is saying to you. So if your brand and all your communication can be flipped, and what I want you to do after this episode is literally look at your website, your about page, your headlines, your bio, your content, your YouTube channel, the language in your podcasts, the topics, the titles for your stuff, the emails you send, look at all of that and ask yourself one simple question. Is this focused on me or is it focused on my audience? And be honest. It might be depressing to realize that the majority of what you put out there is focused on you. Well, the other day I was going to the store and I've learned this powerful lesson. If it takes you to the end of the email or the lesson or the story or the, the podcast to tie it into them and why they should care, you're repelling people. But if you could focus the entire thing at the beginning about them, why they should care, how this is gonna solve their problem or help them achieve a result, if everything is focused on them, people are gonna listen, people are gonna pay attention, and they're gonna love it, they're gonna engage with it. Have an others focused. Number two, magnetic brands are generous. Have a generosity pillar in your business. Be all in on generosity. Brands that aren't magnetic, brands that repel people, have a scarcity mindset. They're not focused on abundance or generosity, they're focused on scarcity. And you see this come out in different ways. So a generous business is one that gives its best material away for free. It's one that gives generous refund policies on products. An, an, and a scarcity mindset online business is one that hides everything behind a paywall or whatever is free is like just super light, fluffy teaser stuff that only makes you feel like you have to go buy the product. Their webinars are junk. The webinars are just 30 minutes of them getting you to realize that you have a problem and then never solving that problem. Oh, the solution to your problem is you have to buy my course. There's no hard teaching in it. Uh, a scarcity mindset business has a really rigid refund policy. Well, show me your work. Show me that you took notes. And, 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 and then if you're still not satisfied and I can see you watched all the videos, then maybe I'll give you your money back. That repels people. People don't like that. That's not magnetic. That's not attractive. You, do you want that? Do you want to interact with a brand like that? No, you don't. So don't be that. Be generous. Why am I doing an entirely free four plus hour training called the audience attraction formula? That's basically a course that I should be selling. Why am I teaching it for free? Am I a crazy person? I might be crazy. I don't think so though. It's because it's attractive. It's generous. It's magnetic you will have a better in experience with me and my brand when I offer something like that. Now, am I saying you have to do free, teach courses for free all the time? No, I'm not. I'm just saying, if you shift your view from, oh, I don't wanna give my best stuff away. Oh, I don't, you know, I, I don't wanna like give a refund policy or mention that there's a refund policy because I don't want them to refund and I don't wanna to have to give their money back. Like if you stop thinking like that, that's only emitting scarcity mindset vibes, which are just unattractive. Like nobody likes to be around people like that. I, you know who I like to be around? People that are super generous, people that'll pay for my meal, people that will let me borrow their house when I'm in need, people who uh, will lend me things and never worry about whether they get them back. People that are generous, generosity is attractive. So if you wanna be magnetic, weave generosity into the ethos and the DNA of your business. In what ways right now in your business can you look around and see where you're not being as generous as you could be and you could push yourself to the point of a little bit of anxiety and fear and be more generous? There's no prescriptive way to do this, but in what way could you be more generous in your brand publicly where that's something you're known for. It's like, man, she gives away some amazing stuff. How can you just love on people well? That kind of stuff comes back. It comes back because it's attractive. It's 
because it comes back because that's the kind of people people want to be around. Generosity. That's the second pillar of having a magnetic brand. And number three, authenticity. This is so huge. Authenticity. Are you being truly you on camera, in your blog post, in your podcast, in your emails, in your sales copy? Or are you being who you think people want you to be and who you think is attractive and who you think might lead to more sales? Have you created a caricature of yourself that you were trying to be, the version of yourself that crushes it online, that has all the right things to say, that is appealing? Have you made up that character or are you trying to be her? Are you trying to be him? If so, two things aren't going to work. Number one, it's really hard to be someone else. It's a lot easier to be yourself. Whether you like yourself or not, you got to be honest, it's easier to be you. By default, you're you. You're not somebody else by default. In fact, it's impossible to be somebody else. You might fool some people if you're a really good actor and you have a lot of time under your belt pretending to be this person, but it's really hard to pull off. So A, that's exhausting and hard, virtually impossible. Two, it's not attractive. The irony of it is you're only being somebody else because you think that person will be more accepted online, be more attractive in a video. And by attractive, I don't literally mean your physical appearance. But for example, we talked about this a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago now, do I have to have a charismatic personality to do well on YouTube or to create content? And the answer is no, but there's we see some big, boisterous, charismatic personalities online. And so we think people like them, they have a lot of followers, if I could just be charismatic like them, people would like me more. But if that's not who you are, it's not gonna work. And people will sniff it out because they know you're trying to be something you're not. People don't like people who are trying to be something. They like people who are being themselves. Why? Because that's what we all wish we could be ourselves also. We're all, this is what is mind blowing about human psychology is we're all the freaking same. We all struggle with the same things. We all are insecure. And so when we find someone who is just living in their skin with complete peace and joy and they've accepted who they are, it's appealing. There's something just super attractive about that where we're like, man, she's just, she's being herself. She's not trying so hard. I want to be like that. You know, like we've gone through an era where maybe the slick guru who seems like he has it all together is appealing from an aspirational side of things. We've gone through that era and we're on the other side of that where now, who are we attracted to? We're actually attracted to people who are open, who are honest, who are sharing about their mental health struggles, their fears, their quirkiness. We're looking for real we're looking for real. So the attractive brands are the brands that are real, not the brands that are portraying what you think, or what they think you want. They're portraying themselves as they actually are. This is certainly true if you are a personal brand, aka you are creating content for your brand, then you are a person. People don't want to interact with a nameless, faceless content brand on YouTube. They want to interact with a person. They want to follow a person in all of your uniqueness and flaws. They wanna follow you for that. If you try to cover those up, it just is like a slap in their face. That like, yeah, here's another person who's just trying to be something that they're not. And it just reminds me that I'm not good enough because they don't think they're good enough. You know, screw them. That might sound outrageous, but that is a logical conclusion for a lot of people. The flip is true. If you are authentic, if you are just showing up as you are, your gift to the world is you. Like you that's who God made you to be. That's who you are. Stop trying to be someone you're not. Can we improve? Can we become better versions of ourselves, healthier versions of ourselves, kill bad habits and unhealthy behaviors? Sure. But the essence of who you are is always been there, always will be, and you can't change it. Don't fight who you are. Show up online exactly as you are. That is your gift to the world. People will see that and say, man, he is living exactly as he is, and I'll, that's attractive. Maybe I could live like I am too. And that may have nothing to do with the content that you teach or the niche that you're in, but it could really be an inspiration. What's crazy to me 
is that all three of these things, having an other's focus, generosity, authenticity, they're all like the core teaching of my absolute favorite book on business, and that is The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann. It's the tiniest little book. If you see them, it's a little red book on my shelf right there. Um, you can read it in an hour. It's a parable. It's a, a fake story about a guy who's a salesman and he's not meeting his quota and he really needs to sell more product. And someone tells him he should go talk to this super rich killer salesman guy. Um, and he gets mentored by this guy who teaches them these five laws of success. And they're very unexpected. The core of this book is that generosity wins, is that people who give more than they take, people who give without an expectation of return, people who build their career and their life around serving others and making sure others get what they need, somehow, in the end, are wildly successful. And two things. One, that is 100% true in my life, in both of my businesses. It, and it's scary every time. But you know what's mind-blowing is it works every time. And so these are just three things that I, I just wrote down because they're true of my business that I, as I'm teaching them to you, I'm realizing this is so much of what the go-giver teaches. Another crazy cool thing, I'm just going to brag for a moment, is that that book, again, has been such a lifesaver and game changer for me. So much of what it teaches, I was already doing in my business, partially because it's based off of the Bible, Philippians chapter two, right? It tells you all about this. Like, don't look out just for your own interest, but look out for the interest of others. Like, that's what I try to build my business around. Here comes a book that basically says the same thing in a different way. And I just, I felt so validated and affirmed and encouraged and got new insights into how to apply generosity. So I've loved this book. I tell everybody buy this book. And I just wrote my own book, how to Get Paid for What You Know comes out March of 2022. Uh, Pre-order now, Amazon. Um, and in in writing this book, I thought I need to get endorsements. That's the little blurbs that people write on the front, back, inside cover of your book to say, man, Graham's awesome, or this book changed my life. You know, usually you try to get famous people or relevant people to say good things about you. And that's really hard when you're a first-time author. But one of the people I wanted more than anything for his endorsement and really just to actually read my book because my, my book quotes him tremendously and my business model is based around the exact same book is Bob Berg of The Go-Giver. And so it's so crazy. I took a chance, reached out to Bob and we had a little bit of an interaction on Twitter years ago because I did a book review of, of The Go-Giver and he found it and loved it. But other than that, like three years ago, um, I don't ever talk to him. I don't even know if he still knows who I am. Reached out to him, took a chance and and said, would you consider endorsing my book? I quote you tremendously in this book. Your book is the foundation of my business model. It completely works in online business. In fact, it's the best way to do online business. Crazy story. He actually got back with me. He said, Graham, I, I have 70 unread manuscripts of books sitting on my desk right, my desk right now, 70. I haven't read them. I don't have time. I'm backlogged. I've basically given up endorsing people's books. I just don't have the time to read these books and endorse them. And yet I feel compelled to read yours and endorse it. So I, I read it last night, cover to cover, and I loved it. And here's my endorsement. And he wrote this glowing, super generous, amazing endorsement. One of the coolest things ever. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling this to you other than generosity works my generosity in sharing his book with other people. I don't make money off of it. I don't even use Amazon affiliate links when I tell people to go buy it. I just tell people to go buy it. I don't care where you buy it. I don't, I don't need to make money off of it. You just need to go read it because the book will change your life. That book is one of the inspirations for me writing a book. I wanted to write a book and many books, Lord willing, that will change somebody's life because I've been changed by books in the past. All these books on the shelf behind me, if you're watching on YouTube, every one of them has changed my life. And there's so many more I'm in Kindle. There's so many more on my bookshelf at home. Books are life-changing. And so people have been generous. I want to be generous by recommending their book. And I wanted to be generous by making a video that praised the book. And then look, he was generous with me by giving me a, a, an endorsement. He didn't have to do that. His generosity is going to overflow in my life so much. And you know what it's probably going to do? It's only going to make me promote his book more. In fact, I am believing that my book will become a bestseller and there will be 
thousands and thousands and thousands of people who read this book and see his name on it and then go read his book, which should hopefully help him sell more copies. I mean, that's how these things should work. So anyway, there's a, there's a tie in there. Go read The Go-Giver if you wanna massage these even deeper. The Go-Giver by Bob Berg, John David Mann. It's a game-changing book, easy to read, fun to read. You can read it tonight and you'll be done. But these three things are often overlooked because they're not tactical because they have nothing to do with technology and automation, because I can't really monetize generosity, authenticity, having other focus. There's nothing I can sell you about these things, but I can tell you that they work, they're the truth. And if your business, your brand, even if it's just you, if your content has these three things, having an other's focus, generosity, and authenticity as their, your core values and your DNA, your brand, your brand's gonna be magnetic. It will literally draw people in. You can't quantify it, measure it, it will just work. And you will not have to go out and find people to sell to, they will find you. They will trust you, engage with you, and buy from you. There you go. So my question for you is, which of these three elements of a, of a magnetic brand are you lacking? Or you could work, work or massage more deeper into ethos of your brand? Which of the three? If you're watching on YouTube, leave me a comment below. If you're just listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever, you need to think about this. I want you to think about this. And if you want to dive really deep into this, please come to the Audience Attraction Formula live training that I'm doing this Thursday, October 14th, for free. Go to grahamcochran.com slash formula. Reserve your spot before we run out of time and it comes and goes. I'm only doing this once. It is a live training. It is gonna be four plus hours, tons of content, live q and I've basically prepared an entire online course to teach you for free, no strings attached. Even if you can only make it for an hour, that hour will be worth your time, I promise. I promise you. Register now, grahamcochran.com slash formula. I'm not doing this again. I want you to come. Even if you don't think you can come, just register just in case. Just in case the day comes and you might be able to come for 30 minutes or an hour, it will be worth your time. We're gonna dive deep into creating a brand that is so attractive that your audience comes to you, engages with you, buys from you, tells their friends about you. It's gonna be both the head knowledge and the psychology of human behavior and how it works, and we're gonna get super practical into crafting headlines, emails, lead magnets, things like that that actually convert and are powerful. I want you to come, the audience attraction formula, one time event. Come hang out with me, please. GrahamCochran.com slash formula. It's free. I'll see you there on Thursday. Hope you're having an amazing week so far, and I'll catch you on another episode. We'll see.